whenever we develop a swelling in our body without any other symptoms we always take it lightly welcome back to ophthalmology for undergraduates and post graduate beginners today we are going to talk about a patient who came and met me he came to me with the following complaints he is a middle aged adult male patient who presented with swelling in the left eye upper eyelid for the past 3 months the swelling had a insidious onset it slowly progressed and attained the present size what the patient was having the swelling was not painful but there was some heaviness in his upper eyelid and apart from that there was no other symptoms whenever such a patient comes to us we have to ask the following history to the patient whether there is any history of defective vision whether there is history of frequent rubbing of the eyes or itching of the eyes whether there is a history of diabetes mellitus for which he is getting treatment whether there is a history of recurrence repeated such swellings appearing in him or whether there is a use of eyeliners in case of females you can see in this patient a nodular swelling in the upper eyelid which is away from the lid margin and it is almost the size of the cornea that is about 1 cm in diameter and it is hemispherical when the lid is everted you can see almost a normal conjunctiva in this patient in some patients there may be a bluish discoloration or there may be a mild inflammation you can also see in this patient there is no much signs of inflammation and the swelling is also not painful and tender but you must have appreciated that because of such a huge swelling there is a drooping of the eyelid that is called as ptosis this is a mechanical type of ptosis having seen our patient now we have to discuss how this swelling has developed as already i told in the lid posterior half of the lid you have the tarsal plate within which the meibomian gland is situated and that is opening into the posterior lid margin because of many factors like history of refractory errors diabetes mellitus frequent rubbing of the eyes use of eyeliners which block the opening of this meibomian gland or due to metabolic diseases patient may develop a mild inflammation in the lid margin whenever there is a mild inflammation in the lid margin and also a very mild type of infection what will happen this meibomian gland which is opening into the lid margin with its duct will get closed in the ductal portion so what will happen is this meibomian gland which secretes the sebaceous secretion or oily secretion of our tear fluid will get accumulated with the lipid substance or lipid secretion so that will get collected inside this gland which is located in the tarsal plate slowly what will happen as days go by this lipid that is getting collected there will get denatured and it will be broken into components of oleic acid which is a foreign substance to our immune system so our immune system tries to 
attack it with the giant cells because lipids are always bigger particles. So naturally there develops a granulomatous inflammation in the meibomian gland leading to a swelling. Already we have seen the swelling where it is located, how it is presenting. So this is how this Kelesian develops. Now you should know what is the definition for Kelesian. Kelesian is nothing but a chronic lipogranulomatous inflammation of the meibomian gland. The etiological factors leading to a Kelesian are similar to the etiologies for the Hardialum externum and internum. But whenever you see a elderly person, that is a person aged about 60 or 70 years or so, who develops a Kelesian, then we should strongly suspect meibomian gland carcinomas. If you just treat those patients, then naturally because of the carcinoma, the swelling will repeatedly come. So that is called as recurrence. So in elderly patient, we should always keep in our mind that it can be a case of meibomian gland carcinoma. Sometimes this Kelesian, unlike what the case we have discussed where it was away from the lid margin, it can be close to the lid margin also. This Kelesian sometimes may develop in the duct of the meibomian gland. In such a situation, it is called as a marginal Kelesian. This also will be not painful. Now, how to treat a case of Kelesian? We have to follow three things. Whether it is a small Kelesian. The Kelesian is a very small one then it may not need a surgical treatment. Just giving warm compresses to the eye and massaging the lower eyelid or upper eyelid where the Kelesian is located, we can express the lipogranulomatous tissue out and we can also try a steroid eye ointment applied in that area. So that way we can try to treat a small Kelesia. Suppose the Kelesia is a very big one like that what we have seen in our case then that will not respond to all these small measures. We have to consider two points whenever there is a big Kelesia whether the Kelesia is located near the lacrimal punctum or it is located away. If the Kelesian is located near the lacrimal punctum, sometimes doing a surgical procedure may damage the lacrimal punctum. So we have to try a injection triamcinolone. 0.1 ml which can be injected into that Kelesia that is 40 milligrams per ml composition 0.1 ml you just inject into the swelling then that will reduce the inflammation and they can bring out the swelling size but what will happen is whenever you inject a steroid there that portion of the skin gets depigmented permanently. So, in order to avoid damage to the lacrimal drainage system, we give this injection. But when the swelling is away from this lacrimal drainage system, the definitive treatment for a bigger Kelesia is incision and curettage. Incision and curettage because when we make an incision in the swelling, the contents will not come out on its own. We have to remove it, scoop it out, all the lipogranulomatous substance inside. So that is called as curettage. 
when you want to do a incision on the skin side it should be horizontal when you want to make a incision on the conjunctival side it should be a vertical one then by giving a vertical incision you are not going to damage the neighboring meibomian glands so that way this chelation is managed whenever you treat a elderly patient with a chelation it is not only removing the contents out we have to send those contents for a histopathological examination to rule out meibomian gland carcinomas if it turns out to be a meibomian gland carcinoma we have to definitely do a treatment that is going to get rid of this carcinoma from the patient sometimes this chelasia may get infected when it gets infected this chelasia will get converted into a hardiolum internum that is a secondary hardiolum internum will be pus pointing on the inner side so in that case we have to treat this case similar to a hardiolum internum so this is all about chelation today any swelling that is not painful we have to give proper care and get rid of the swelling apart from that we have to treat the patient with spectacles for refractory errors ask them to be hygienic not to rub their eyes whatever minor inflammation is there in the eye we should try to treat them with this we'll stop here today we will talk about some other topic in the next video thank you